National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance presents a Bravo video event, the Business Insurance Zone, dedicated to financial professionals who use insurance in their practice. And on today's show, we're talking about critical illness with Ken Smith, CLU. And now the host of the Business Insurance Zone, the Wiz of the Biz, insurance columnist, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. We're broadcasting live to a nationwide audience of financial professionals right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And with me today is Mr. Morbidity himself, Ken Smith, CLU, right from Lincoln, Nebraska. Welcome to our Thanks, show. Thanks, Steve, for having me. Well, Ken, not only that, but I notice that all home office guys that come in here to do tapes with us record with us all do it in the winter time <laughs> I, mean, I mean i just talked to somebody from your from your city right from lincoln and i told the guy he says steve what's going on down there how good is the weather i said it's so good i'm wearing sunblock 15 today i'm wearing sunblock 15 so it's a beautiful day in phoenix i want to welcome you to the show today we're going to go off the rails because generally everybody expects steve and all his guests to be mr mortality Right? We talk about annuities all day long. We're on life insurance in every area, whether it's term, GUL, second to die, variable, you know what we're in it. But today, we're going off Steve's knowledge. I know that freaks a lot of my watch listeners out and viewers as they say, Steve, you don't know anything about morbidity, but it's true. I have seen your area invade my area. There we have critical illness writers. We have terminal illness writers. We have DI writers. I mean, you guys are attaching your show onto our mortality table. Why is this all happening? Well, Steve, it's, it's really simple. If you stop and think about the advances that have been made in medicine in the last 25 years, um, the conditions that used to kill us a generation ago, the cancers, mm -hmm. the heart attacks, the strokes, we survive them today. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of good doctors, good medicine. One of the examples that I, that I use a lot of times is the fact that when I started in the insurance business, I look at what term rates were then. Mm. Today, they're 50% or even in some cases, one third of what they were then. Why is that? Because we survived those conditions that used to kill us. Well, I'm looking at your pedigree here and I love this, Director of Health Product Sales. When I think of health products, I always think of the traditional issues, well, DI standalone, LTC standalone, medical standalone, but really, you're way broader than that. The, the focus today is what you mentioned before, the living benefits. Mm -hmm. The benefits that you survive, or when you survive those covered conditions, you know, you've got mm -hmm. to deal with the cost that go along with it. I mean, you think about someone who's diagnosed with cancer, Steve, um, when they're diagnosed, and they hear those ter terrible words, mm -hmm. the first thing that goes through their mind is the life and death issues. The second thing they face are, what's the treatment going to be like? Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is, how am I going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. And what critical illness insurance is all about is taking care and removing that financial stress mm -hmm. so that an individual can focus on the most important thing, and that's recovery. Mm -hmm. Why, though? Uh, why now? I mean, you're saying that we've had medical advances, no doubt about that. And I mean, I, I see that. But we're attaching all these living benefits, these riders, and, um, you know, mortality products like life insurance, like, like annuities. Well, Steve, stop and think about it with, with uh, w what makes more sense. I mean, someone's out there selling a term product. Mm -hmm. what, what's more likely to happen mm -hmm. while that term product's in force? Premature death? or a critical illness, for example. Yeah. Depending on their age at issue, or what age, their current age, basically they're three or four more, more times likely to have a critical illness mm -hmm. than die during that period. Well, it's for sure. I saw some of the limer stats on the last 10 years, and I'm not talking about all, but the last 10 years, on term insurance alone, I think it was like one half of 1%. That's how bad it's gotten. And when I think about the odds of what are the bigger odds, am I gonna get disabled? Am I gonna have a critical illness? Am I gonna have some kind of a catastrophic need for care, you know, catastrophic uh, accident that I'm gonna need some kind of a care issue? And you guys manage these stats. I mean, you know the stats in America. Now, I, I was really amazed because I always think that we're the vanguard the U.S., but I guess it's a little bit of conceited on my part as an American because you were telling me, I think there was some unbelievable number out of the U.K. that there's a huge proportion of people who have critical illness just as a protection item. This is really, this is really interesting, and, and I'll share with our audience basically 
What tends to happen is if something starts in the, U, U, in the, in, in the United States, we become quick adapters. Mm -hmm. But if it starts somewhere else, we're slow adapters. Mm. And what's really been interesting is critical illness protection is sold in 55 countries around the world. And the U.S. is probably the slowest to adapt to it. Back to your question, Steve, one of the interesting things has been in the U.K., 25% of the working population owns a critical illness policy. <laughs> 60 to 65% of those individuals purchased it as mortgage protection. And again, mm -hmm. if you really stop and think about it, you know, what's more likely to happen mm -hmm. while they're paying on that mortgage? Premature death mm -hmm. or critical illness? Now, I'm not saying that you don't need life insurance, mm -hmm. but I'm saying today, mm -hmm. in today's world, and with the changes that have taken place, you need both critical illness protection and you need life insurance. Yeah, I wouldn't want you to come on my show and tell me we don't need life insurance. This is, this is basically my forte. Well, you know, I'm looking at, you know, in your resume, you know, you, you were past president of the National Association of Critical Illness, you know, insurance. I, I didn't even know. I'm always amazed at new groups that I discover that are out there, right? And here's another new one on me. I've been in this thing 30 years and I, I've never heard of this organization. And, and part of it is because we're, we're, our purpose mm -hmm. is to create awareness with critical illness. We sponsor a critical illness conference every year together with mm -hmm. LOMA, LIMRA, and the Society of Actuaries. Now, I know you've been with a, a, some, some pretty heavy-hitting car carriers that are in this area. Right now you're with Assurity. I'm thinking about when you're looking at this from a all our audience, 90% of our audience is going to be financial advisors, professionals in insurance. They're saying, okay, I know you're right about the statistics, but why are we not, we, we know this kind of, we know this is right, what you're saying, but why are we not playing in your league? Okay, part of it is because as an industry, we have done a crappy job of educating the producers on the changes that have taken place and on the products. But by the way, can we say crappy on the air like that? Is that okay? Okay, I guess we're all right. Okay, could have been worse. It could have been worse. I just, I just checked. Just, just so we get it past your compliance sorry. people, Steve. Whew. Well, compliance, what's that? <laughs> hey, we're in health insurance. <laughs> Do I have a health police? I, didn't I just wanted to know. We're in health. Well, when I'm, when I'm thinking about it myself, you know, I well, came up through the career side, so I had to learn how to sell life insurance, but I also did have to learn how to sell disability, right? And disability actually didn't pay as much as life insurance, but the renewals were huge. Is that the same today? It, it's exactly the same. You know, I, I hear that from producers on a regular basis. You know, they're used to the heaped commissions mm -hmm. that go along with life. One of the things that you'll find with critical illness is the renewals are great and they go on forever. Mm -hmm. How can I position my practice to take advantage not only of the statistical inevitabilities that we're talking about here for, for our clients, I, I want to learn how to build out my practice with distinctives. And, and actually, when I'm thinking about this, this would be pretty distinct to start talking about this to clients because I, I don't think a lot of our field force, we have, and we have a huge a viewing audience, I hardly ever get any questions on this. Very rarely. I mean, a little bit on the writers, but, but on, on different writers, but not on this issue. Let's, let's walk through some specific markets, Steve. The one market where critical illness protection is being sold very successfully right now is basically in the major med market. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that's happened is the producers in that market have had to move their, their clients to higher deductibles. And what they've done in a lot of cases is put together a package of critical illness protection together with an accident only to help transition those those individuals mm -hmm. into the into the higher deductibles and it really does two things number one it puts together a great package for the client and the second thing is and more important to the producer just as important to the producer is it increases the comp that that producer mm -hmm. receives from that sale mm -hmm. you know the second market where we're it we're seeing success is basically as part of the mortgage protection sale and it's it's been interesting for a lot of agents who sold mortgage protection through the years um, just going back to their existing clients and talking to them about hey things have changed here you know yeah you need that term insurance i sold you but what's more likely to happen mm -hmm. and wouldn't it reduce your financial stress if you're diagnosed with cancer and you know your mortgage will be paid mm -hmm. for the next 
two or five years? Well, I, I don't know how critical illness like an appendix is, but somebody in my family just had their appendix out at 50 whatever, and that was $11,000 procedure. I mean, that's not critical, but that that's just a small thing. I'm thinking a real critical illness, what would that cost? And how would that hurt a family? Well, you know, it's going to re really vary pretty dramatically mm -hmm. according to the situation. But but let me give you a couple examples sure. without getting into the, the finances. Really, two things. Um, number one, you know, I told you it removes the stress when someone's diagnosed with mm -hmm. one of the covered conditions. I will tell you one of the most rewarding moments I had in this business was I did a meeting in, in Lincoln, Nebraska, um, there was a part-time agent from Central City that after I did the meeting, she went out and bought a policy on her husband and herself. And about four months after that, she, her husband had a heart attack. Now, mm. he, he, he went in on a Friday. He, she went in to see him on Sunday morning. And she said when she went in to see him, she said, you could see the stress of the world on him. And when she reminded him about the critical illness policy, Basically, she said, you could just see the stress leave. Hmm. And she called me up that Monday morning and she said, Ken, this did exactly what you said it would do. It removes mm -hmm. the financial stress. Well, if you did, you should have had that on film that his, you see his BP going down <laughs> when she's telling him that. That would have been the close. Of I, a life, that would have been the close of a lifetime. Well, no, I mean, I get it. And I think we get it as, as producers. And we do want to do the right thing by our clients. And I do want to protect. I mean, this is an issue of protecting our health, our, our stress level, our financial stability. I get all that. I'm trying to figure out how do I foray into this market? How do I play? There's, there's, a couple, there's a couple things you can do. Number one, really sit down and look at your clientele. Um, as a supplement to health insurance is one, mortgage protection, mortgage protection is a second one. Well, how big is that though, the, the, the mortgage protection? Because I can get the supplement to health care, I get that, but how big is that? I mean, that's, that's gotta be huge. It, it, the potential market there is, is tremendous. Um, you know, I mean, and, and I'll tell you, Steve, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but well, I look well, at... Well, wait a minute. My, your script I, said I, you're, yeah. you're the number one authority on morbidity <laughs> in the nation. No, no. <laughs> but, but I know that when I see what's happening in the UK, and I have, I've developed some friendships with some of the producers mm -hmm. over there and talked with them about it, then the second thing is, in Canada, mm -hmm. the leading seller of critical illness protection up there is Toronto Dominion Bank. And they have the worst product in the marketplace. But basically, they're selling it as mortgage protection. And, the, and it's still bought. And it's still bought. So, you know, like I said, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I, when I see what's happening in England, I mm. see what's happening in, uh, in uh, Canada. You know, there's something there with this. Wow. Well, you're listening to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that focuses on insurance in your practice. You can email me at my email, thebiz at brokersalliance.com or toll free 1-800-290-7226, extension 147. Ken and I will be right back right after the break and a word from Brokers Alliance, one of the leading authorities and distributors of insurance products. back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant, your host, insurance columnist, financial color commentator, and in my own view, interviewer extraordinaire. <laughs> hey, you don't have to laugh about that, Ken. Gosh. Hey, remember, you can, before moving forward with anything you hear on our show, 
always talk to your CPA, tax attorney, or broker dealer department, and I doubt very much they know anything he's talking about. <laughs> Number three, if you want to call me on any products, questions on life insurance annuities, LTC, DI, and group pension plans, just give us a ring, 1-800-290-7226. Hey, it's not what I know, it's who I know, and that's why I have one of the nation's number one authority on critical illness in the show, Ken Smith from Assurity. And Ken, when we're talking about it, I mean, we just left the first segment on the issue of mortgage protection, which I totally get, and I'm wondering if that's gonna be the, the new kind of mantra to sell critical illness, because that's your number one investment, and you don't wanna do anything like, you know, forget that I have to cover that piece off first before I cover anything else off. The potential, the potential is huge, Steve. Mm -hmm. I think there's just a tremendous opportunity there with, mm -hmm. with the mortgage market. Well, let's just think about this. I'm just trying to think about it through now. I mean, there's, there's, you guys are major players in this, major players, if not maybe even the van, a U.S. Vanguard on this. When I'm looking at our guys, we're, we're trying to go back to our field force, and we're saying, okay, uh, the mortgage protection I think is the easiest for everybody to grasp. This is a really good idea. This is a saleable idea. When I go in front of people, business, I'm thinking even business owners, right? Critical illness, they're in partnerships. I have buy-sell agreements. I have cross-purchase. I have stock redemption. I'm in with somebody else. They get a critical illness. I still have to do all the work. You know, what's the, you know there's got to be ways to indemnify myself. And, and I will tell you, I had a story. I had a, a talk to a producer. I shared with you I talked to mm -hmm. producers up in, oh, in the U.K., when I was first getting into the critical illness market, mm -hmm. this is back over 10 years ago, I talked to a producer up in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and he told me a, a story. Mm -hmm. He had done a presentation to two clients, um, 34, 36, business partners, and they didn't buy. Hmm. The 34-year-old, about nine months after he did the presentation, was diagnosed with cancer. Hmm. You know. Bad news. 34? 34. Wow. The other thing is they had a loan from the bank, mm -hmm. Steve, and they had a demand loan. And, you know, the good news with a demand loan is you get a lower rate of interest. The bad news with a demand loan is... If they need it, they can call it. And, wow. guess, and guess what happened? Yeah. The banker called the loan. No, no, was so, that specifically triggered by this guy's illness? When, when he found out that the 34-year-old had the cancer, they, he pulled the plug on the loan. Wow. And, you know, here the 34-year-old's starting chemo, okay, they're looking around, scurrying to try to find financing for the business. And who's going to loan money to a, part, a business where part one partner's right. got been diagnosed with cancer? Right. And the, the agent I talked with said, Ken, if they could have just gone to that banker and said, we've got a check for $50,000 mm -hmm. coming in the next 30 days. He believed it would have made all the difference mm -hmm. in the world for them. Oh, I love securing financing and looking at and here's my policy. Here's where that money's coming in. I have a 30 days accounts receivable. That would have taken the bank, the heat off the bank all day long. They probably would have never called that in. Right. I mean, th this is what we're talking about. I mean, I know we're talking in broader scope of indemnification scenarios in planning, but today we're using a morbidity techn technology of critical illness because we know we're going to face it. And so I'm wondering, I'm wondering how, like in products that, uh, we'll just use your company as an example. Give me a product that you guys do today. That's kind of that, that's where you say your bread and butter critical illness, you know. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Well, like, like, is there, give me a, is there a product that you know out there? You don't have to say the name of the company or anything, but is there a product out there that says, yeah, this is what it does. I get, I become critically ill. What's the rules of engagement? How do I trigger the policy? That is really simple. And, and one of the ways I, I like to describe it is you're diagnosed with one of the covered conditions, mm -hmm. cancer, heart attack, stroke, mm -hmm. kidney failure, you know, go down, go down the whole list. Mm -hmm. Basically it pays a lump sum on the diagnosis of one of those covered conditions. And what's really good about it is it's so simple. You know, I'm diagnosed with cancer. No, this is, so if I had an accident, not not the same. The accident's not the it's same. separate, okay. Right, so I'm diagnosed with cancer, okay? Basically, there's gonna be a test, it's a pathology report, that, and the pathology report says, I have cancer, and it's a certain kind of cancer, and based on that diagnosis, I'm mm -hmm. gonna be able to collect benefits. The best way to describe critical illness protection is really it works a lot like life insurance. 
it pays a lump sum you know on the diagnosis of the covered conditions you can actually do with it whatever you want but I, I think think of it in these terms is it's like life insurance only you don't have to die to collect benefits it's life insurance for mm -hmm. the living now under our code of the US if one of our clients had to exercise their their rights under the policy they get a fit like in your example of fifty thousand dollars is that fifty thousand tax-free there there has been no Treasury ruling up to this point in time but there have been several private letter rulings that support the fact that if you're paying with after-tax dollars the benefits will be tax-free and most of the everything we're doing, talking about is after tax that's that's correct okay well so far keep your fingers crossed on those PLRs okay right <laughs> exactly well I, I'm, I'm I'm kind of wanting to broaden it we're always looking for things on the show to broaden our influence as an advisor and I always want to look at us as kind of like the quarterback, the liaison between my client's financial needs and me being able to come up with product and inventory and solutions. So when I think about critical illness, I think this would be new to the vast majority of our audience today. I mean, they're not, they know the idea, but they haven't sold it themselves. So when I sell critical illness, it's protecting those basic diseases that are on that platform that you described. And it's a quarterly payment a single payment a it's it's basically designed you can pay it monthly you know it's basically an annual renewable mm -hmm. type policy underwriting issues um, we have simplified product to up to 50,000 mm -hmm. and then um, once you get above 50,000 we can go from 50,000 all the way up to 500,000 wow. and you know the underwriting for the higher limits is mm -hmm. a lot like preferred life insurance okay so so if I am I I'm taking blood and urine on, on the higher level, APSs, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the biggest is just it's going to be really looking at this. Is would you say? I'm just curious because this would be new to me too. Is it going to be the same kind of underwriting look like DI would get? It's a little bit different. It is when 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 I talk about underwriting for the mm -hmm. higher limits on critical illness, the preferred life is is the best analogy. Mm -hmm. Usually, if someone will qualify for preferred life, they'll qualify for mm -hmm. critical illness protection. When you well, I, what if I was table B? If I take the <laughs> if I take the metaphor, let's say I'm table B non-smoke. Did I just knock myself out of? N not not generally not, necessarily. not yeah okay. not necessarily. Right. So, so I have to be kind of down the food chain in my ta heavy table ratings if I was using the metaphor to, to kind of get a, a handle. Right, around. but again, again, you've mentioned it. Um, morbidity underwriting mm -hmm. is different than mm -hmm. mortality underwriting, and the conditions that might cause mm -hmm. might trigger um, a critical illness. May necessarily not result. May not not necessarily result in death. I sometimes think, though, I just be honest, Ken. I and mean, I think I've made this mistake too. I've kind of mixed critical illness with catastrophic events, with terminal illness, with you know disability. I've kind of hodgepodge them all together. Right. And now, and and remember, the advantage this has over like accelerated riders mm -hmm. is it pays in addition. You know. One of the challenges you have with the, with with some of the accelerated riders is you have to be terminally ill, mm -hmm. or you have to be really serious, and you're taking away a death benefit at a time that person can't qualify for anymore. Mm -hmm. The advantage with critical illness protection is it pays in addition to that life death benefit. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take it away. Would you say the definitions are tough, or you know, because that's where it's all going to come down, right? I, the legal I, eagles are going to struggle the, the, over this. It, it's easy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can even explain it. And, and I'll, I'll just give you the example. I get the questions about cancer on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of cancer covered? Is that kind of cancer covered? Basically, every type of cancer other than the simple basal cell skin cancer mm -hmm. will be covered. In most cases, we're going to pay the full 100% benefit. There are. We also have a cancer in situ benefit for cancer that's diagnosed early, and in most cases can be removed easily with surgery. We pay a twenty-five percent benefit, but mm -hmm. but ninety-seven percent of the claims are invasive cancer for cancer. Now we have basic material from from your company, right, yes. and so forth. If you want to call and say, Steve, I, I'm listening to you and can talk. This could be a thing I could dip my toe into. I'd like to try it. If you need any of the material on this, go ahead and call us, 1-800-290-7226, extension 147, and say, I'd like some material on critical illness from Ken Smith from Assurity. We'll send that out to you. Or you can write us right at the email address, thebiz at brokersalliance.com, and we'll send it to you. I'm, I'm trying to think about how, I've, if, you know, if I'm out in the field, I wanna, I'm going to get your material. I'm going to look at this. 
Do you have any training for this? We do. There's a lot of online training. Is it uh, that, video too? It, that's in that's in a video oh, video format. And it, in fact, um, we can access if they'll contact you. Mm -hmm. I actually have done a simulated sales interview and have a script to go with it. So it's a step by step. It's a step by step process. And how long is that interview and in, in the film, the video itself? The interview or the video itself is 12 minutes. Again, if you want to get the video on this, that would be excellent because that's kind of you're really role playing it, right? Exactly. And walking the client and, the, and the handling objections it. and and all that. We have some objections in there too. That well, I, I like the verbal volleyball of role playing. I mean, I just kind of like that yin and yang back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. If we're talking about that again, just. Go ahead and write us at the at the show's email address, thebiz at brokersalliance.com. Links, right? We'll just send them the links. We'll send them the link. We'll send it. you all the links for this and uh, all the material. And I want you to look at it because this may be what you've been looking for. Everybody's looking for a little nuance, some area that's distinctive for marketing purposes, for their strategies in their community to kind of cut themselves out of the pack from the ordinary advisor. Even insurance professionals, I don't know if many of us being more mortality driven are addressing this. It's one of those things where, you know, I've been in, in this business for over 30 years now, and I will tell you the, the one thing that's impacted me with this product is I have seen it make a difference in people's lives. You know, we can be in this business for a long time before we pay a death claim, but the, these claims come quickly and frequently. Well, you've heard Ken for yourself. I think you need to hop on our website, www.brokersalliance.com, where we'll have all this information for you on anything you want to download on Ken's show. Hey, I'm Steve Savant. You've been listening to the Business Insurance Zone. That's the buzz on the biz for today. Get in the zone, the Business Insurance Zone. This has been a Bravo video event of the National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance one of the largest distributors of insurance products and services to a nationwide network of insurance professionals. Need insurance guidance? Call Brokers Alliance. Business Insurance Zone, dedicated to financial professionals who use insurance in their practice.